You know, this was sort of the question that I've had for a long time when it comes to Xbox Series X. Like, why exactly is this thing not performing the way that it possibly should be, right? Like, if you look at it on paper, very much more powerful than the PS5. And, you know, it's not even a question. So, I've been asking this question for a little bit and just kind of feel... I don't want to say ripped off, but I feel a little bit disappointed that the console hasn't delivered what we thought it would. You know, you have stuff like the PS5, which is not only technically, but very much so less powerful, less capable, but yet they've managed to put pretty much everything in 60 frames, no matter what it is, and, you know, just been able to kind of do their own thing. And, you know, as an Xbox fan, that sort of left me a little bit, I guess, salty. I don't know, that would possibly be the, the proper word for it. But, uh, yeah, uh, I've been sort of upset about it. And now Digital Foundry is kind of giving us an idea of what's really going on there. Um, they were talking about this, and it really puts things in perspective. And so I'm, I'm curious to see what everybody else thinks about it. So um, they're talking about why games run better on the PS5. So on paper, Series X is considerably more powerful. Uh, than the PS5, so why are we looking at a console generation where Sony and Microsoft's machines often deliver like-for-like -like results? So it's really a puzzle that has confounded many over the last few years, and after discussions with multiple sources, including some of the highest profile AAA developers in the business, there's some answers, you know, and it's all laid out in Digital Foundry's Direct. Of course, I'm going to link this in the description. You guys can check it out. So in terms of technical specifications, the Series X is undoubtedly the most powerful on the console market, at least until the PS5 Pro arrives. The GPU 12 T flops uh, augmented by a ton of memory bandwidth, a max of 560 gigabytes per second. The PS5 is 10.23 teraflops with uh, 448 gigabytes uh, per second of bandwidth, so uh, quite a significant divide there. Um, if we were seeing that spec comparison in the PC space, you'd expect to see some form. Uh, you'd, you'd expect to see the former handedly outperform the latter, which, but we haven't really been seeing that. You know, it's a little bit understated to say the least. Um, it hasn't really happened. Uh, it's the closest console generation we've ever seen in the bulk of multi-platform releases. The differences are fairly minimal. One machine may outperform the other, or vice versa sometimes where there are differences it really kind of comes down to dynamic resolution scaling which often looks invisible in a to b comparison so it's definitely a far cry from the xbox one x versus ps4 pro face-off where microsoft's machine commanded an obvious advantage or the ps4 versus xbox one comparison where sony technically held a similar notable advantage so here's the thing i'll talk about with the xbox one x real quick no doubt that thing was a beast of a machine. Uh, the GPU on that thing could really raw horsepower its way to do a lot of things. And I think developers, you know, sometimes they didn't really take advantage of it. But in the cases where they did, it was like mind-blowing how much difference there was between the two. Uh, you know, like, for instance, Red Dead Redemption it was native 4K on the Xbox One X. And it was like, what, 1300p or something on the PS4 Pro and kind of blurry. So, you know, it was instances like that that really showcased what it could do we haven't got that on the xbox series x so far you know i'm not saying that there's bad looking games on it obviously you know somebody when i tweeted about this the other day uh, somebody goes oh well you know hellblade 2 looks great i'm like yeah hellblade 2 looks, does look great i'm not saying that there's bad looking or that there's not good looking games on xbox what i'm saying is every game should be better <laughs> on xbox and that's not just a fanboy thing that's just how it is so anyway after years of conversations with developers, what's the ex uh, explanation? Uh, how can a less capable machine outperform the more powerful one? As seen recently in the Elden Ring Shadow of the on Entry coverage, the frame rate difference uh, in favor of PS5 is surprising, bearing in mind that apparently uh, the less capable machine. So there's some interesting theories over the years, such as how Xbox Series X's split memory setup, 560 gig gigabytes uh, per second of bandwidth, on fast memory, 336 gigabytes on slow memory may be impacting performance, but the number one reason we've heard from developers concerns the nature of Sony's development environment. More than one key AAA developer tells us that the PlayStation GPU compiler is significantly more efficient than Microsoft's alternative, meaning that there's better utilization of the graphics hardware in general. So we understand that the lower level API access afforded to PlayStation's development means game makers get more from the hardware. So basically, they've got better developed tools. You guys have probably Probably heard the term tools a lot uh, from you know various podcasters youtubers whoever uh, but basically what it means is that playstations are easier to use and more more friendly for developers so developers are going to 
actually be, uh, you know, uh, better for him, you know. So, you know, we'll see how that kind of works out. Uh, you know, we're four years in this in a few more months. Um, you know, to me, Xbox Series X, both the consoles to be this generation have been a little bit of a letdown um, in terms of what we've gotten from them. So, you know, I'm not going to lie about that or kind of BS anybody about it. It's just, it's true. I just feel like both these platforms haven't really released games that are, you know, um, that impressive. You know, I mean, certainly they've both released some decent games, but at the end of the day, uh, nothing that really blows my mind and says oh well you or where i gotta tell a friend you definitely gotta get a xbox or a ps5 to play this game right there's been none of that this generation where you know usually um there there is you know so hopefully uh, that comes in the second half of the console generation maybe the ps5 pro helps in that situation but um to see this kind of stuff you, you know and say okay well um playstation just has better this or that or the other you know compilers or what have you I, I just think that that is realistically a a really crappy situation for microsoft to be in where they didn't really think ahead um with this like what good does it do to have a powerful platform if you don't have like the easiest platform to develop for you know and that's really an unfortunate uh side effect of being in last place i think as well you know because you have to take that into consideration so uh the second most common explanation they receive from developers concerns the nature of the gpu himself mark cerny discussed this way back in march of 2020 when he revealed the technical specifications of the ps5 while the console may have fewer compute units than the xbox series x 36 versus 52 the entire GPU runs faster, meaning that certain tasks will complete faster, uh, better suiting certain game engine designs. The extent of the advantage was always an unknown as PS5 operates with the boost clock on the CPU and GPU. Uh, however, we're yet to hear any complaints from developers about the boost clock uh, impact in the performance. So in terms of raw numbers, there's an interesting tidbit from the recently leaked PS5 Pro developer document engaging the CPU boost option, which inc actually increases the clock speed 10%. But only sees GPU performance drop by 1%. So, based on the conversation, a combination of more efficient GPU compiler, lower level APIs, and higher clock speeds allowed PS5 to match or even exceed the outputs of the Xbox Series X in some scenarios. That said, of course, there is value in the approach Microsoft has taken by uh, standardizing on DirectX 12 and the DXR ray tracing API. There's a commonality with PC development that obviously helps game makers, and of course, Xbox still has more compute throughput so game engines that tap into that will actually see some advantages additionally there are situations where the xbox ecosystem and feature set yields dividends for example while elden ring may run faster on ps5 sony's limited implementation of variable refresh rate support means they'd still much rather play the game on the series x it's just a smoother more consistent experience so at this point i uh, haven't heard the same points of range for uh, unrelated developers means it's effectively case closed on the percent on this topic and we expect to see similar situation play out the rest of the generation ps5 pro that's going to be interesting we'd expect it to lean into the same strengths that made ps5 competitive and go beyond uh, pssr machine learning based upscaling should act as an effective multiplier of sorts uh, this is it's actually a very interesting kind of discussion um you know it, it's, it's just one of those things that kind of um is going to lead kind of credence on what what i think is going to happen which is you know if the ps5 is already and this is what i was already kind of talking about before if the ps5 is already uh, you know outperforming the xbox series x then what's actually next for you know microsoft right so i, I just think that that's really something that um it doesn't look good on microsoft you know you don't have something to compete with that you see that the ps5 pro is coming and yet uh you don't have anything to really go out there and 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 showcase things right so my hope and i've mentioned this in a very various videos was that um you know the hope was that that microsoft would get more use out of the xbox series x with the ps5 pro out there because developers would be able to better take advantage of what's there so that's still kind of the hope for me anyway um i don't know what do you guys think about this i mean how how do you guys feel about how close these consoles have been despite the fact that the xbox series x should be seeing a huge advantage in pretty much every game you know it's just kind of weird to me that it hasn't really been there yet so 
I don't know. And in fact, there's been some really bad cases where Microsoft was investigating it early on in the generation. But I don't know. Like I said, I'll link this. Let me know what you guys think. I appreciate it. Thanks for watching. Rack them up. Crap Gamer out.